tell you how this program came about. Uh, I have never done refreshments, and usually our, our ladies do such a great job that I, I just sort of hang back, you know, and let them do it. But Donna said something about the last time she was tired of the women doing all the work down here. So she said, why don't you and Jimmy Harris do the uh, refreshments next month? And I said, well, if I do the refreshments, you're going to have Farrell's Burger. And uh, everybody sort of chuckled at that. But you know, the more I thought about it, I thought, now what could beat, could beat Farrell's Burgers? So in these two containers, we have 40 one half Farrell's Burgers. And I was really glad that we didn't have more than 40 people. We, Phil and I sort of talked about how many we'd come tonight because it's real cold. A lot of people didn't want to, wouldn't want to get out, but then on the other hand, we had interest from the people down in Florida wanted it taped and wanted it on YouTube and all that, didn't they? And, it, and you had one more from some place. St. Louis. Yeah, from St. Louis. Because Farrell's is, in fact, an institution. Our Facebook page is read all over the country. Yeah, so they were reading our Facebook page and they wanted, they would have been here if they could have, but that was good because we didn't have to feed them. Ready and responsible. <laughs> Very good. Now, I wanted to just say a couple of little stories about Farrell's. Now, if you picked up the little sheet, there are lots of stories about Farrell's, and some of you may want to tell them tonight or, or tell them to Phil or whatever. But what I remember is the old Farrell's that was the, the little uh, mobile home kind of white building that was down there on the lot where, C, uh, where the Family Dollar store is now. And we lived down on Arch Street, and my mother, she liked Farrell's burgers, we did too, and so she would... Uh, when I got to be about seven or eight, she would put me on a bicycle and, and she'd say, go, go down to Farrell's and get, a, get the family. For, she'd give us only about $2 and that's all it took, some french fries and some hamburgers. And I would go and do that. And I, I don't guess I was very smart because I never could figure out when they'd say, two to go. I thought, two what? How do they know? But anyway, turned out they knew. <laughs> So, <laughs> right, right, I had the two to go and, and I, I just could never John's figure, I thought you had to really be smart to work at Farrell's because you'd have to know what they were talking about. They sort of spoke in code. And then, and then I thought that the key to making a good hamburger at that time was how hard you'd hit the burger. Because they'd put this little piece of meat and I mean this lady would whop it and I thought that's what made it good. <laughs> would you do that again, Ray? <laughs> <laughs> I can't whop it like she can. But, there have been all kinds of characters through the years at Farrell's. One of my favorite field was Elor. Did I get that name right, <laughs> Miss Elor? <laughs> Miss Elor was, uh, she would, uh, they would tease her and, and she could give as well as she could take. And uh, she wasn't afraid of anybody or anything. And these guys would give her a hard time and she'd go back behind the, in the storeroom there and get a broom. And I've seen her chase them out of there. And they all acted, you know, acted like she was really getting them. So my father-in-law, he was coming in from uh, when we first married. I wanted him to get the flavor of Hopkins County. I wanted him to hear Sister Ethel Blankenship on the radio. <laughs> and I wanted him to go to Farrell's because I, I wanted to see Elor with her broom. And, and I, was, I was so disappointed because the day we went in, Elor was not there. Everybody was just calm and peaceful and everybody ordered their meal and the meal was good but after we finished he said you know the meal was really good but I really didn't see any characters down here and I said well I know that's the way it goes <laughs> so anyway I, I, I want to mention one of the hospitals here the Red at Hopkinsville you remember her yeah, yeah I worked with her son yeah. uh, they, they do stand out they do have some characters down there uh, and uh, uh, I had the good fortune of being hired by Philip's father and, and mother to represent them down in Hopkinsville. I had to tell this whole story because I think this is sort of funny too. But, and what they tried to do, they tried to get old Mr. Farrell to, to put in a public bathroom. And he didn't want to do it because that store is awful small and they had a, just a small bathroom out there. And so he, he would look for a lawyer that could find a loophole. <laughs> well, I looked at the statute and all the regulations and I, I found a loophole. Seems like anybody who'd been there before the Civil War uh, was grandfathered in. <laughs> so, anyway, so the trouble is, uh, we went to a hearing and, and they brought Philip. And uh, I, I read about his mother, who just died a couple of weeks ago at age 96, and that had a fiery temper. And I, I didn't see it. She was the sweetest little lady down there when I dealt with her, but. 
Uh, Philip was a different story. I thought he was going to kill the guy before we got out of there, and I'd have a good criminal case on my hands. <laughs> but now I knew where Pharaoh Philip got his temper because uh, he said his mother had a fiery disposition if you crossed her. But what I found out was so interesting down there, and this is sort of a tribute to this today, as soon as we got potato chips, is I said, Phil, how come you can't get french fries down here? He said, well, you know, my father, when they started people started putting in french fries. I suggested to him, he said, well, I'm not going to spend money for a fryer like that. He said, that's just a passing fad. <laughs> and he, said, he said, anybody want potatoes? Here they are, friends. You know, you board them up. <laughs> so, and you still can't get french fries, can you, Phil, down there? No, because as long as Mama was there, she was, she held the line. So, anyway, but she was quite a wonderful lady, and, and I asked Phil if if, if he you know wanted to pass on this because we'd already scheduled this and he very graciously said no he would uh, he'd come down and talk to us tonight on the history of Farrells. Let's see I probably have one other thing to oh yes I was gonna say Miss Farrell had a secret a long life. She ate a Farrells burger she died you know at 96 she ate a Farrells burger and was active I think what until she was 94 running the place and that was her key to longevity and every time I go down there and have one of those good Farrells burgers which I do every time we have one of these meetings because my wife won't cook because she didn't have enough time, you know. And, and I think, well, that's, that's certainly not hurt me because if I can live to 96, I will be doing well. So tonight we are, in fact, honored to have uh, the man who has his Ph.D. in hamburgerology, Dr. Phil Farrell. <laughs> One of those people eat before we get into this. Oh no, no, we got to okay. have the speech, and then we we we'll keep them hot. All right. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, where where'd you put? The, oh, there's a little memorabilia I put. Oh, okay. Poster up here. Uh, I'll go through this kind of quick. It, it gets kind of boring about our family over the years. Uh, my wife has compiled a little thing for me to say, and then, then comes the funny sheet. So. <laughs> in 1929, my, my uncle Charles Bainham Farrell, uh, he was born, and, and they had no children. He had one son, Billy Lucas, by a uh, 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 had a stroke, too. So. Eat, eat feral hamburgers, that'll make you get well. <laughs> it, uh, he had one son by his ex-wife, and her, his name was Billy Lucas. And then uh, Billy Penrod was one of the right-hand men that helped, according to my cousin in, in uh, Owensboro, or Evansville, or uh, maybe it was, uh, or it might have even been, uh, Henderson, that's where it was. So uh, they had some connection to Dub Alfred. I don't know what it was. I think he may have worked for him at one time. And then he came to town and, and put in Alfred's. Uh, he had the Owensboro restaurant. And according to Joni Farrell Simpkins in 2016, uh, the brothers started in business by buying two restaurants. That's not exactly right. Uh, from Hill Brothers, one on Main Street and one on 4th Street. Later, a restaurant built on the site. Main Street Restaurant, the building was larger and nicer than any of the other Ferrells. It was the last one built by the original five. Joni remembers this happening when she was about 10 years old, but everything in here she remembers when she was 10 years old. And that would have been about 1946, she said. The restaurant had a soft serve ice cream machine, and that was their highlight. But this restaurant had a meat packing plant in the back, and they'd, they'd buy the hanging beef and slide it in and take it around in the back and cut it off as, as needed. And then the restaurant later closed, and the property was bought by the uh, Baptist Church, building it down and using it for a, a uh, parking lot. Then comes Clarence Maxwell Farrell, uh, Uncle Max. He was the smartest one of the bunch. He, uh, he worked for the Postal Service. <laughs> Not much to say about him. Uh, James Powell Farrell, Uncle Jim, he was here in town. Uh, he married Helen Williams, uh, children Ruby Nell Farrell Lowe, 
Billy Jean Farrell Lightfoot, Sarah Jean Farrell Austin, Nancy Nelson Farrell, I knew her. She was his third wife and they had no children. And this is per Thixton Horn in, in uh, 2016. And that's a little boring deal. And uh, we'll skip the rest of that. And we'll get over here to uh, Lee Farrell. I lived with him for a short while. He wanted to open a, a pizza restaurant. And he was married to uh, Bill Isabel Hudson Farrell. And uh, she had children, Margaret Farrell Cockrell. And uh, I think she's in prison now. Uh, <laughs> Mary, Mary Clem Cockrell. Children were. Don't, don't share all your dirty laundry. Well, yeah. <laughs> Might as well get it on out here too. Uh, but she she likes it there, and then they they keep it warm in the winter and cool in the summer. So uh, I'm just going to skip that cheat day. Uh, let's see. And then I had an uncle Bob uh, Martell Farrell. And he married Clara Mabel Estes, and he died in 2006. And his children were uh, Bobby Jean Farrell Simpkins, 4336, that's when she was born. And she married Bobby uh, Simpkins. It was her second husband, she had no children. And his second wife was Doris Farrell, and she, she had children Jeannie Jim Farrell and Clara Mabel Farrell. And, uh, when they tore the Henderson store down, bricks were sold as souvenirs. So we'll cut that one a little short too. Then David Shelley Farrell, my father, uh, in 1929, he was 16 years old. He went to the third grade in school. It's probably about the equivalent to a doctor's degree now. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, he was a pretty smart businessman. Uh, and that's why we haven't changed our menu much. Uh, Nancy Elizabeth Farrell Schmidt Fitzpatrick, uh, choose one. She uh, she was married a couple of times. One of them's not on here. Uh, she had a son named William Farrell Schmidt, and a second one named from Thomas Houston Fitzpatrick, Shelley Crawford Fitzpatrick Farrell, and uh, he's a anesthesiologist now. He's he's a smart one in the bunch, and I married. Uh, yeah, like she's got my ex-wife in here. Martha. <laughs> <laughs> Martha Alice we, don't, we don't normally talk about that too much. <laughs> and, uh, and the oldest boy, David Wayne Farrell, he was born 12, 9 of 68. And then the second wife, <clears throat> Betty Carolyn Dare Farrell, and she was born in 48, and I was too. She was born 210, and I was born 222. I like older women. <laughs> and we've had Benjamin Wayne and Nicholas Farrell, and uh, I don't know what all this hella blue is she's got written down here, <laughs> but uh, we uh, we bought the Cadiz rest or we built the Cadiz restaurant in '75 for my sister, and she moved back to town to Cadiz, and she developed multiple sclerosis shortly after we opened that restaurant, uh, and I, my father pleaded with me to sell it, but I had equipped it. And he built the building, and my mother bought the lot, so we were all involved. And I said, "No, we'll just we'll just keep it." So uh, he had a fit every month. He'd tell me to sell it, and every month I'd just buy a new car. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let's see here. Da -da 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 -da. Business bought by Philip Farrell in '71 for Nancy Farrell. Oh yeah, the uh, restaurant here in Madisonville. We bought it in '71. Well, uh, actually it was a little bit earlier than I think it was 69 because I was in the, in the services of our <laughs> great nation. And uh, that was when I bought it. And in 1971, I started leasing it to my aunt, Nancy, who's the widow of Jim Farrell. And the property was purchased from the Oddfellas Lodge. They wanted us to, uh, uh, have first opportunity because we built the building and uh, we just uh, had everything invested there and, and they wanted to give us first opportunity so we, we took the opportunity and bought it. So let's see, the girls of the family were Mary Elizabeth Farrell Overholtz who I have never seen. 
<laughs> Aline Maxwell Farrell McAllister, never seen her. Helen Teresa Farrell Walker, I saw her once. These people aren't in jail or anything. Yeah, they're, they're, they're all either in jail or, or uh, on probation. And, I, <laughs> and I've got an undisclosed location for them. Let's see. Uh, now, Thixton Horn was another older relative that, that my wife got a hold of, and she said none of the brothers served in the military. I know my father had a draft card because I found it, and he had a heart valve problem when he was young, and it was fixed in the 80s, and uh, so he he had a, a an excuse to not go, and I, I think the other guys were draft dodgers and uh, bank robbers. <laughs> They had a lot of fun doing it. Let's see, downtown, so it's one look at. Yeah, I can't go with that. Let's go with this. This is a lot better. <laughs> okay, we had three stores in Bowling Green over the years. One of them is still standing. It's uh, da -da 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 -da. Well, I'll get down here to it here in a minute. We had one store in Hopkinsville. They had three stores in Owensboro, one in Henderson. Clarksville had two, Madisonville had one, and Cadiz, of course, had one. Uh, Owensboro had the meat plant, and they'd get uh, gas ration cards to run their meat to and from. So they'd, they'd get extra gas rations to run their, their hamburger meat to and from the restaurant. And they enjoyed that, and it was kind of a, a silly thing, but, you know, it, you gotta do what you gotta do. Charles was down on his luck, said Joni, but she didn't really tell me what uh, what he did about it. David was in Hopkinsville in Henderson and hired Carol Kane. He, he ran a local uh, uh, men's clothing store after he worked for my father, and it was in Hopkinsville. Bob ran one in Clarksville, Tennessee, and Joni would go down there and she'd walk in and take a $20 bill that he'd give her, and she would, uh, they'd try to trick her on her change. And she was well versed on what it should be and, and what she should get back, and so she'd get different amounts back. And uh, she'd say, no, no. And she said, you owe me, you know, a dollar thirty-nine or whatever. And then she'd take the uh, change back. So, uh, let's see, she remembers Clarksville till she was six years old, so let's, a big round of applause for that. <laughs> round of, da, 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 went to Clarksville. And he went to Clarksville from uh, Owensboro. Now the big one was built in Owensboro the second time. And uh, in Clarksville, Tennessee, they had uh, two places. And one of them had an A rating. Now what that meant to the military at that time was if it didn't have an A rating, the it was off limits to the soldiers at Fort Campbell. And uh, he came in one evening after a, a lieutenant had inspected him and white gloved under the grill and he found a little speck of, of uh, grease and he, he took away his A rating and left, left one he did. So he called, I guess it was Roosevelt that was president in 41, 42. <laughs> he, he went into a rage and called him and he got his, uh, his A rating back within 12 hours. <laughs> Let's see, Uncle Lee. Uh, oh, Uncle Lee, that's my old partner over in uh, Bowling Green. I told him I wanted a steak dinner one night and he, he had a full service restaurant. And uh, he said, "Well, let's uh, let's come on in here. And let me let me find you a good tender steak." And we walked in his old walk-in, and uh, he walked over, and there was a piece of hanging beef there. And he said, "Come on over here, boy." I said, "Pick it out." And I said, "Pick it out." And I said, "Where?" And he said, "Right here." And it was green, and uh, I picked it out, and he carved off a big piece. And I thought, I don't, don't know if I can really eat this or not, but anyway, he took it back and washed it and uh, not with soap, but with water. And then he fixed it, fried it in a skillet, and it was the most tender steak I've ever eaten in my life. So he knew a secret about aged beef, I guess. Uh, let's see, my father and my Uncle Jim put, uh, or my Uncle Bob put Jim in business here in Madisonville. They bought the uh, 
little trailer that he was in down on Arch and uh, Maine. And uh, then we can jump around here. Uh, the guys all begged Aunt Nancy not to marry Jim because he was kind of a wild card. And uh, she married him anyway. And probably the best thing that ever happened to him. I think he was sober a day or two after, I, <laughs> after that. They begged Aunt Nancy not to marry him, okay. Joni was sent to help Aunt Nancy to uh, <coughs> run the business when, when my Uncle Jim first died. And she said she had everything under control and was very self-sufficient. She went back home. She was, uh, and my aunt couldn't, uh, she was scared to death of, of the night, the dark. So she would stay down there all night, every night, and then, you know, go home during the day and sleep. So, uh, my father always said that during the Depression, they were hungry, and that's why they went into the restaurant business. <laughs> and Uncle Lee, he was the one I lived with when I first got out of the Army for a little while. He, uh, he wanted me to go into the pizza business with him, but I'd already bought the, the restaurant here in town. Let's see, they, they bought two restaurants from Hill Brothers, and uh, I think that was before the Owensboro store. And it was in 1926, not the current sign that says since 1929, that's, that's wrong, it should be 26. Uh, and then I fought for free parking downtown, and uh, I fought the parking restrictions for they go around and mark your tires with a little chalk thing. I don't know how many of y'all know Willie Peach. He, he'd mark the tires with chalk, and if it wouldn't move within two hours, he'd write you a ticket. Uh, then I also fought for the against the one-way streets that they put all over this town, and uh, I lost. <laughs> and uh, but we've started taking tr credit cards now, credit cards and debit cards, and the kids. That's all they carry anymore. They, they, uh, they've been a big shot in the arm for our, uh, our uh, business in all three stores doing credit cards. Uh, let's see, let's tell a little funny one here. Two guys in Hopkinsville, back when streaking was a big thing, they, uh, they walked in <coughs> naked, right out of the car, right inside, and uh, told Annie Mae, Justice, you remember her? She, uh, she said, <laughs> she, uh, she called the police, of course, and the police came down and, and uh, they proceeded to march these two guys out, and they also marched them all the way down to the jail, which is about a six-block uh, walk, I guess, <laughs> naked, and they uh, got lodged there, naked, and uh, I think they learned a valuable lesson over there. <laughs> The, uh, the fellas came in that used to eat in the Clarksville store, and it, it became Bob's Reds and Ed's after we sold it to them. Uh, and these guys would go there and have coffee about one or two days a week, and then they'd come to Hopkinsville and have coffee there a couple of days a week. And so a few months back, they came and asked me if I minded if, if they spread some of the ashes from their third buddy. And I said, no, you gotta do it. And, you know, if he wanted it, do it. And uh, so long out, out front, next to the building, they spread his, about half of his ashes there. And uh, never met the man, but he looked nice. <laughs> <laughs> and let's see. Uh, the state police used to uh, stage their session in the back room of the store here in Madisonville. They would uh, they would all meet there and have a bowl of chili, and uh, then they'd have to go and get their arrest made quick. And they uh, <laughs> got one girl down here that uh, jumped on a box to try to flatten it the other day, and they called her broken knee now. <laughs> she's uh, in fact both of them, and. Uh, so that's a worker's comp claim. Smoking, uh, smoking ban helped help business here. And Elvis, if y'all have or have not seen him, I don't know, he could play a guitar as good as anybody I've ever seen in my life. He, he uh, some kids, the story I get is some kids 
uh, ambushed him out back one one time and tore his guitar up. And uh, Jim Yeckering, when he was still in the palm shop business around the corner from me, he uh, he gave him a new guitar with or new to new to, to and he would. Uh, he had all the strings on it. He didn't know what to do for a while, but he learned to pick it really good. <laughs> he could play anything you could hope for. Uh, now, E. Laura, one time, I heard one of you mention E. Laura, I think. Yeah, yeah. She was cleaning out the freezer in the back room. It was a chest type freezer about six feet long. And I was sitting in my office doing some paperwork, and uh, I do that a lot. And uh, her feet were just kind of dangling, and she was reaching down to the bottom trying to clean it. And I thought, you know, just take just a little bitty bit. She, she flipped right over in there. So, uh, <laughs> so I did. <laughs> and, oh. and I slammed the top real quick and I jumped on the freezer so she couldn't get out. <laughs> and uh, my, my wife picks the darndest times to come in. <laughs> and then one morning, some guys heard about that. So they threw a, a, a good healthy possum in the front door <laughs> and uh, they ran out. And uh, they they had to call me to come help them get the possum out. <laughs> now Flint Brown, I don't know how many of you remember him. Flint. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Flint was uh, he was a colorful local man. Liked to drink a little bit. Uh, and uh, I didn't do it, but I, I saw who did. And uh, it was ugly. They found his <laughs> bottle he had out out back. And. Uh, they thought it might taste a little bit better if it had a little urine in it. <laughs> so they, they poured part of his bottle out, ran it back up to the line, and uh, that was that was ugly. <laughs> You're not serving that tonight. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've already taken it up. Uh, we just mixed in a little possum out there. Gary, you do edit that tape. You do not get the <laughs> And uh, a little commentary with it, yeah, a little commentary that'd be fine. Brother Whitledge back here uh, reminded me of something I had totally forgotten about was the tater guns. Uh, oh, yeah, we uh, Jim Eckering made me a couple of uh, wonderful tater guns. I had and I, I practiced more than he did, but uh. <laughs> However, he, I'll tell you a little story on him. One day he got uh, the young man that worked for him. He was about half there and about half not there. And uh, he said, go over into the, beside the railroad tracks over there and get down with this catcher's mitt and catch this uh, rag. I'm going to shoot it to you. He did. And uh, Jim did. And it knocked him out. And uh, put a big, big wart right in the middle of the street. He didn't. Uh, he didn't get up real quick, <laughs> and uh, he was he was worried about him. <laughs> but uh, talking about taters, that a workers' comp claim. Oh yeah, you could uh, you could stuff your tater in there a little bit and then shave it off and then plunge it on down in there and put some gravel over it and then start another tater and shave it off and plunge it in. You got the world's largest shotgun. And uh, I've been known to bring down a whole flight of pigeons in one shot. <laughs> they, uh, they, they can't outrun it. They're not fast enough. I killed one on top of the third story of the building that we own across the street. Uh, I was standing on a wall out, out in the back of the parking lot one evening. And uh, I said, you see that pigeon over there? And they said, that'll never make it there. That, you can't shoot a tater that far. <laughs> well, I did, uh, and he fell. He was he was pretty dead. <laughs> and uh, uh, so, uh, let's see. I'll tell you a good one here. This uh, fella came in about three quarters drunk one night, and uh, to the store here, and he told Fanny Jane. He said, Fanny. Uh, See a nice way to put this. Uh, <laughs> I'd sure like to. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'll just get in your pants. Uh, and she said, "Why did you poop in your?" <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's, that's pretty, uh, and uh, let's see, customer. Uh, da, 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 da. 
Well, yeah, I, I've got a customer here that when he was a young, young child, he and uh, a buddy would take two girls and they would go down and, and they'd buy two burgers and a, and a pop for a dollar. <coughs> and uh, they really enjoyed that every day. And let's see, my father during the war, he was, uh, he had a little bit of me in him, I guess, some kind of way, but he bought a uh, Packard, an old Packard, brand new, and he was going to speculate on the car. And he said before he sold that car, he thought he was going to have to eat it. He uh, <laughs> kept it so long. And uh, let's see. I guess that's about it. If we have any questions, I'll try to answer them. Or I may have just had a stroke again. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you got any Pauline stories? Oh, Pauline. Goodness gracious. I've got yeah. a Pauline story. Oh, yeah. I, I remember when I was What in for school. you? Yeah. What for you? <laughs> we used to go down, um, well, when we had snow days at school and we'd all head out to Bogus Boulevard with our sleds and our disc and whatnot, and on the way back, walking back, because you walked everywhere then, um, we'd all stop in at Farrell's. And this happened numerous times, so Pauline was always there during the day, and she always had a cigarette in her mouth. <laughs> And most always, the ash, I know, must have been this long, and you'd blink once and it would be gone. And you didn't see an ashtray anywhere, but you always just kind of assumed, that we didn't know if it was ash on those hamburgers or if it was pepper, but it really didn't matter. They were still good. The ash won't make you sick. No. So, uh, let's see. I think I'm open for questions within reason. Uh, let's see. How about memories? Memories? Yeah. Memories? Yes. I love them. Can I, can I do one? Sure. Um, my husband and I came up from Florida, living in Florida. We came up to get married in Madisonville, and a couple of nights before our wedding, we went to Farrell's, as you do, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and was Flint the one with the oh, yeah. speech impediment? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, this is going to sound like a put down, and I really, 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 it wasn't. But we enjoyed his speech pattern so much that for years and years and years, on our anniversary, we talked to each other like Flynn. <laughs> well, that, was part of, that was part of our wedding memories, you know. And so it's, it's kind of, we've been married 46 years now, it's kind of gone away. But for years and years and years, we talked to each other like Flynn on our anniversary. Well, so. I'm gonna try that tonight. <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can, I, can I do two two I things? Think Flynn. I'm sorry. Can I do two things? Um, the Twidells that used to live here um, have a son that lives in China, and you all may have seen it on Facebook. Did yes, you see? Uh, yeah. And so when he ran across a sign in China that said Farrells, he emailed it home to all of his Madisonville friends, and I think it got posted on, on if you're from Madisonville, I think. But he was so tickled to find something that reminded him of home. Yeah, it's odd to get. Yeah. yeah, I think Flip got fired pretty often because oh, yeah, my husband delivered home, <laughs> and Real you know arms. he would say, yeah. "What again?" Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He was he was skin and bones. Yeah. The, the liquor took its toll on him. He he. Uh, he handled it well. He could. Uh, he could always handle it well. Yes, sir. Yeah, I knew your dad, and I'm from Hopkinsville here. But where was your family originated from? Like your grandparents? Where were they? England? Up over here. No, no, I mean no. <laughs> the name Farrell is English. What is it? The well, now, I'm gonna tell you a little story about that. I just. Uh, my wife and I took a trip to uh, Seattle, and we enjoyed the area. And. Stayed uh, Fort Lewis. Yeah, and uh, there's a there's a spiral in what name what's the name of that town, Alan? Do you Tacoma. know? Tacoma. It it's be between Tacoma and Seattle, I think it is. Yeah. There's a spiral on the river where uh, Lewis and Clark right. founded the West Coast. Right. Well, Carolyn and I were riding out there one day, and it was drizzling rain, and I I was driving to it, and I'd go up, and it dead end. I'd have to veer over and go up, and then. It did in. I'd have to veer to the left and go up. And we finally got to uh, 
the top of this mountain. It was the wrong mountain. You know, you could see the doggone thing from down below it, but we couldn't get to it. So I drove around this clear-cut field, and I said, man, this would be a great place for a, for a home or something. And uh, we, we passed down it and went to the right and started coming back up, and it said Pioneer Cemetery. And I said, Carolyn, get out and uh, check that grave site right there. And she swore that I knew about this, but she did. She got out and she checked the grave site and it, it said Farrell. Uh, she would know, she, she would have done a lot better job than I have. I'm, I'm pitiful at it, but she said that it was such and such Farrell. And we went to their uh, genealogical yeah, center down, downtown there. And uh, we had stayed at a, uh, it was a bed and breakfast that was an old, old, old hotel many, many, many years ago, and it was real ornate, and that's why we went back. But we spent the rest of our week in that, uh, she had relatives on the same boat that went out there. And uh, I don't know if any of you have ever seen the, the, uh, the old shipwreck in, uh, it's on the Mississippi River, I think, it may be in Kansas City. I'm not sure where it is exactly. We, we were on an Amtrak and we went out and we'd get off and stay for a day or two here and a day or two there and we went to the West Coast. Amtrak's a great way to travel, but be sure you get a full sleeper car. Don't just take one of those little cars. <laughs> but uh, we, uh, we found an old, old, or the man found an old, old ship in one of the places where the river on meander and then it would just get cut off and uh, it was out in the middle of a cornfield and he he got the city to give him water and and hook him up and he blasted it all away and he found an old donkey tied out on the front of the thing uh i don't know what all it, it it's it was the most amazing uh old relic i guess that you could find it had a it had a uh, sears log cabin that somebody bought and was shipping it out there and uh, it had the numbers on all the logs and which one went where and and uh, needles and threads and the types of things that we all considered you can go to right to the dollar store and get they were in short supply i guess in the in the new frontier or whatever it was and uh, that that was another great play, uh, trigger finger of uh it was uh, <coughs> It was a good, good trip, and uh, I certainly appreciate you all having me here tonight. I know I haven't prepared real well, but my mother was buried a week ago today, and uh, that's kind of held me back some. But uh, if there's any more questions, if not, y'all can come on up here. And... Well, I'm going to leave the applause because I, I don't think we've heard that much laughter since Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Of record that there's supposed to get a story gathered together to put you in next year's yearbook? Well, I was on the. Well, he doesn't use me anymore because I sent him a bill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Randy wouldn't take the hamburgers. <laughs> and, uh, it took well, you made of, him go buy these, right? It, it well, took, he gave me a good price. It I'm took thinking. two of them to get me off the table. I know that. Because <laughs> so I was going to get that guy. <laughs> <laughs> it was a salt. When you slap something like that across the table, and you slam it down on the table, and it slides across the Now, what did you chest. do with that spud gun? Well, I'd have shoved it up his rear end. <laughs> <laughs> had Jim had a, a Balanca Viking. You know, he took and trade. This was an airplane. It was pretty fast. We, we went down to Florida any one day. <laughs> anyway, and uh, he, uh, his, the guy that you were talking about that Mike Randolph had got his, got his head hit with a potato gun. I don't know if this caused this problem or not because he's had a head start. But, yeah. but uh, Mike, Jim sent Mike out to, to wash his airplane. And uh, yeah, Mike was washing it. And here came Don Bowles and Rog Badgett and some people. They were loading up their airplanes with guns. You heard this story? No, I haven't. Well, anyway, they were loading their airplanes with guns. And old Mike comes over there and he says, uh, what y'all doing with them guns? <laughs> he said, well, we're gonna go, go duck hunting. 
he walks away and he comes back a minute ago and he said, you going to shoot them ducks with them guns? He said, yes, sir, that's what that guns are for when you go down <laughs> hunting. He said, well, I've got a question. He said, when you go up in, them, in the air to shoot them ducks, how do you get them windows down on that airplane? <laughs> Jim said, I was so embarrassed I had an idiot like that among all those rich people. <laughs> okay, well that's my end of our story, so we'll eat.